Hi guys, this is Josh Muzakis. Uh, I just got back from an awesome trip in Spain to go test out the new Stark Varg electric dirt bike. And I just wanted to share some of my thoughts regarding the bike, um, the company itself, and how the whole experience was. So for those who don't know, Stark Future is a new electric motorcycle manufacturer based in Barcelona, Spain. They're essentially picking up where Alta left off and hope to offer a competitive electric motorcycle. And they've made a lot of really bold claims about this bike, including that you can get a 35 minute moto out of a single charge, as well as kind of redefining what an off-road motorcycle is and redesigning some areas of the bike that we take for granted. So let's take a look and dig into some of those claims. I was very fortunate and was able to see their offices and manufacturing plant in person. However, I was not able to take any photos or videos um, for obvious reasons. They have a lot of proprietary information out on display there. Um, but I was really, really impressed with what I saw inside their factory. Um, their battery building and testing process is extremely thorough and very refined. Um, and their assembly line is already rolling and it's definitely built to be scalable in the near future. So they're kind of getting their process dialed in currently. Um, and it seems to me based on how they've set things up, they're really designed to be able to scale this operation relatively quickly and increase production. One of the biggest things I noticed when first looking at this bike up close in person was just how well thought out a lot of um, some of the components are that we take for granted on current gas motorcycles. Um, the first one being the chain adjusters in back. I know there's already been a lot of press on these um, and I was skeptical when I saw these the first time. Um, I, I thought there might be a problem with them binding since the adjuster bolt was not centered. Um, but when I saw them in person, saw the clicker style and actually talked to them about the design a little bit, um, they admitted they had a, a few issues early on and they, um, they iterated the design a little bit to, to alleviate those issues. And from what I've seen, it, it seems to work really well now. And I think that was a really unique piece that was well thought out and something that we've, other manufacturers have really just ignored um, and not seen that there is a better way. So I really appreciate their, their approach to that area. One of the other things that I noticed immediately was just the overall quality of the components um, included with the bike. So as an engineer and machinist myself, I notice all the small details in their design and their machining process, how the parts are machined and the tool paths are used. Um, and these components are just really, really well done. Everything from the triple clamps to the bar mounts, um, all of their machine components are just works of art and a step above any OEM component that I've ever seen on a production motorcycle. The fit and finish of the components is also done to a really high standard and that's something I appreciate because it gives you confidence that the design and setup the entire bike is well thought out. Um, when you look at the individual components and how nicely everything flows and fits together, you really get the sense that you're getting what you pay for on these bikes. Um, and a lot of forethought and work has gone through to execute the design of this bike and the manufacturing very effectively. There's also been a lot of rumors out there regarding how solvent the company really is, um, whether they're actually going to ship bikes, things like that, or even whether it exists at all. Um, and I can definitely say after meeting the team, seeing their office, their facility, everything, um, this is really an incredible group of people and what they're doing and how passionate they are about it is um, it, it's really inspiring for me to see. Um, they're clearly 100% behind this mission to build the best motorcycle they can. Not just the best electric motorcycle, but the best motorcycle that they can. And I think that really shows through with the pride that they have in their finished product. So on to actually riding the bike. Um, one of the first things you notice when you hop on is the power of this bike is really incredible. Um, obviously they go all the way up to 80 horsepower, which to me is completely unrideable under normal track conditions. Um, the track we were riding, as you can see in the video, was um, it, it wasn't very deep. It was relatively hard pack and dry in a lot of areas. Um, so I actually never really went above 
55 horsepower throughout the day. Um, I just didn't feel like I needed more. Um, any higher than that, and I was having the back end step out a little bit. Um, but at the 50, 55 horsepower range, I was able to control the bike easily. And on straightaways, it had more than enough power to get you down there quickly. It's important to keep in mind that horsepower on electric doesn't necessarily translate like you would think it would. So 54 horsepower on electric is going to feel a lot faster and a lot different than a 55 horsepower gas machine, uh, mainly because you have the increased torque and you're also not having to shift. So it's, it's kind of like always being magically in the correct gear and having however, how, however much power that you want on tap immediately in any RPM range, which is really an awesome experience. Um, and it's also important to note that the tuning of the controller is also extremely important, if not the most important factor in this as well. Um, their controller was very well tuned and it was very intuitive for the rider getting on immediately to know what the bike was going to do and how the power was going to react to a given throttle input. This is obviously something that's impossible to actually quantify and put numbers to. It's more of a feel thing, um, but I can say I've ridden quite a few electric bikes over the years, um, full sized and mini, and this was definitely one of the most intuitive ones that I've been able to hop onto and just go and feel comfortable on immediately. Um, they also have their app on the phone that's included with the bike will provide a lot of adjustability. So as of now, it's going to include five power maps and you can change um, the power percentage and also the engine braking percentage um, on each of those five maps. You can really tailor it to what you need. Um, there are plans to increase how much and how you can change the bike over time. Um, but this is a really good starting point and enough for people to play with and kind of get a sense for how you can adjust how the bike feels, the power, the regen braking and all that. It's really an incredible concept when you think about it to be able to change the power maps of a bike that drastically. Um, I think we've all probably experienced there's certain tracks where you want more power or maybe a little bit less power depending on conditions or track layout. Um, it's really cool to be able to switch from a 250F to a 450F or a 125, whatever power range you want basically, um, or engine braking level that you want, just with the slide of a bar and the click of a button. It, it's really an amazing experience and something that um, is going to be a game changer, I think, in the future. And now the most important topic that I know everybody is waiting for, um, how is the battery life? So. For me, the very first thing I did when I hopped on one of their fully charged bikes was go out and immediately do a 20 minute moto um, and see where the battery was. So when I pulled off after that 20 minute moto on the track of relatively hard riding, um, I had just over half the battery left, which was really amazing to me. Um, granted, this wasn't a very deep track. It wasn't a sand track, but there are quite a few up and downhills that do require power um, and yeah there I, I don't see any reason on any track why I wouldn't be able to get a full 30 minutes out of this bike at my skill level in talking with Sebastian Tortelli um, their pro test rider and also just a legend in the US and also in Europe um, he said that he was easily able to get 35 minute motos out of this bike consistently um, and he's obviously riding at a much higher level than I am so that definitely put any of my concerns about battery life to rest. And um, yeah, I think they've definitely made good on their claim of a 35 minute moto on a single charge. Moving on to the handling of the bike, uh, my overall impression is that it's a very solid and predictable chassis. Um, I was able to attack rougher square edge sections pretty aggressively on this bike and feel very comfortable that it wasn't gonna step out or do anything unpredictable. For those that have spent any time on an Alta, you notice that the bike has a very heavy front end feeling and it relies a lot on the front tire for steering, whereas the Varg has more weight bias to the rear. Um, it's a lot easier to steer with the rear wheel. Um, personally for myself, I didn't have a huge problem with the front end weight of the Alta. Um, 
I would maybe opt for something that's a little bit in between both bikes, um, leaning more toward the lightness of the bar. Um, I'm very particular on the front end and I tend to steer more with the front wheel, so I don't mind having a little bit more bias to the front. Um, so in a perfect world, I would maybe add a couple percent weight bias to the front on the Varg, um, but overall, I would say it's a step in the right direction compared to the Alta. And I think it's important to keep in mind, that's a very personal preference. Every rider is going to want something a little bit different. Um, one's not necessarily better or worse than the other in this respect. Keeping on the subject of the front end, that was really the only hiccup in handling that I had with this bike. Um, under really hard braking, like downhill landing into a corner, um, under heavy front braking, I felt like the front end was maybe a little bit vague um, and wasn't as predictable as I would want it to be. Um, and I found that the stiffer that I went with the front fork, that seemed to remedy this problem. And I would actually probably go stiffer than what was available. Um, I talked to Sebastian quite a bit about this, um, and he had suggested maybe bumping up one or two spring rates on the fork. Um, it, it felt to me like maybe the rear shock was overpowering the forks a little bit, um, so maybe upping that spring rate on the front would help remedy that issue. Um, the valving itself on the forks was spot on, the shock felt great. Um, that was just one of the things that I noticed. And again, that's entirely a personal preference. Some people would be completely fine with that. Um, if it was my own personal bike, I would probably try a little bit stiffer spring rate. Um, but that's entirely just my preference. And it was a very, very small issue in the grand scheme of things. I point this out only to show that th there's no perfect setting right out of the box for every rider. Um, they had three settings available to us that day. Um, there was a stiff, a medium, and a soft, depending on what test rider wanted to ride or what their riding style was. Um, I stayed on the stiff setting basically all day and that felt the best to me. Um, but I think that really goes to show how good of a job they've done setting this bike up and providing options for all of us of various skill levels to be able to get comfortable and how close they were able to get it right out of the box. I was also really happy to see KYB suspension components front and back. Um, I'm a Yamaha guy for the most part, so those forks and shock are very familiar to me. I already have tools that fit everything to be able to jump into both of them and tune as I need to, so that was a huge bonus for me. The last note that I want to make on the handling of this bike, and I guess it's really a note on electric in general, is how easy it is to adjust the pitch of the bike in the air. Um, I think this is something that's really underappreciated and maybe not talked about enough. Um, obviously on a gas bike you have gears and at some point you're going to run out of free rev gear length in the air. And on electric that's not a problem. So if you actually jump nose down on an electric bike and give it throttle in the air, you're able to spin that rear wheel a lot faster than you could in say second or third gear on a gas bike um, before you were to hit the rev limiter. So you're actually able to jump a lot more aggressively and more nose down on an electric bike like the Varg because you have the confidence that you're gonna be able to bring that front end up if needed um, and be able to adjust the pitch of that bike a lot quicker and more effectively than on a gas machine. There was actually one jump, um, a pretty good sized tabletop on the track that we were testing on and um, it had a pretty large hole in the landing actually and there was a few times that I hit that jump, ended up landing in that hole and I thought man this could go really bad, the bike could kick um, and the bike just took it like it wasn't even there. I, I was shocked. Um, on any of my gas bikes I would have been concerned about hitting that hole in the landing and after that, it, it was like it wasn't even there. I wasn't concerned about hitting it at all, even though it was in the fast line. So I ended up just plowing through it every lap with no issue. At the end of this video, I'm going to include a little bit of footage of me um, riding their Supercross track. Not because I'm a great Supercross rider or anything, um, but I think it just goes to show how easy it is to jump this bike now confidence inspiring it is um, supercross is not something that i ride 
at all. I never practice on it. Um, this was the first time I've even been on a Supercross track in over two years. Um, but I was able to get some of the rhythm sections down, just doubling through, nothing crazy. Um, but I think it just goes to show how easily I was able to adapt to the bike, um, time jumps, control the pitch, um, and how confident I was quickly on this machine. So if I had to give an overall summary of this bike, um, I think the easiest way to state it is that I don't see any way that somebody could hop on this bike from their gas machine and not immediately be faster. It's so easy to adapt to. Um, it's so intuitive to the rider and the chassis is so confidence inspiring. I think anybody who were to hop on this bike and do a few laps is pretty immediately going to be able to go faster and ride more consistently than they can on their gas machine, um, even if they're coming off a 454 stroke. Thank you for watching this video. Um, if you have any questions about the bike, feel free to drop them in the comments. Um, I just want to give a last thank you to the whole Stark team for um, inviting some of us out here to ride the bike, um, check out the factory. It, it was really inspiring to see their team um, and see the passion that they have behind this project. And this was definitely a once in a lifetime trip that I'm never gonna forget. It's really cool to me to see a new player start to shake things up. And I think once we start to see these show up into customer hands soon here um, and around the local tracks, I think this is gonna change the sport overnight. Um, once people catch on to how good the spike is and just how adaptable and easy electric is in general, um, I, I think you're going to see a huge shift in this sport in a very short amount of time. That's my prediction.